Hello, this is Storybooks channel. New videos are posted every day, subscribe and click the bell. That April day, Kelly remembers it in great detail because it was a turning point in her life. The morning began as was customary with a boring breakfast. Her mother fiddled with the stove and cursed her unsettled life. When will it all end? I dread waking up in the morning, just waiting for another gift from fate. Wendy was constantly working on her life, highlighting the flaws, but she deliberately did not mention the pluses. Although there were many positive things about the recent changes, I decided to remind my daughter of that. Mom, are you being unfair to Lady Luck? Of course, she throws you various problems, but there are positive things in it. For example, your promotion can be considered a significant plus. The woman didn't even turn around. It's easy for you, Kelly, because you've never experienced human meanness. You think I just got this job. I wouldn't have taken it if it weren't for you. I'm doing this for you. I'm always your guardian angel, keeping you out of trouble. Wendy turned over a slice of bread and remarked contentedly how crusty they were. I got croutons, and notice, Kelly, and that I don't use machinery, I do everything by hand. You should. People are brainstorming, inventing useful appliances to simplify our lives. And in general, without modern achievements, we are stuck in one era for a long time. My daughter has a different opinion. As a professional chemist, I know very well what happens to products and when they are exposed to different external factors. Wendy, as an experienced surfer, caught her favorite wave, and Kelly clearly knew what it threatened her. The girl pleaded with Mammy. You've had another false start. You are still at home, not at your institute. Don't think you're smarter than your mother, and for some reason you're always making inappropriate remarks to me. Don't you think it's at least indecent? Wendy made a hurt face, and Kelly hastened to correct the situation. Mom, you're the best mom in the world, and I'm not trying to hurt you. On the contrary, I want you to pay more attention to yourself. You are young and very beautiful. The daughter's compliment had an effect, and the woman looked away embarrassed. What are you implying? You don't know. Mommy, you need to cheer up. It's spring. It's the best time for romantic encounters. Wendy didn't share Kelly's daughter's enthusiastic network. The time of my romance is long gone, leaving not so good memories. Mom, you're contradicting yourself. Brand daddy with the stigma of infidelity, but you can't forget him yourself. The department chair's daughter knew the family history in different variations. Wendy's own version was that her husband, who left her with a young daughter, was the ultimate bastard. According to the version of grandmother Vanessa, it was her daughter-in-law, not her son, who was to blame for the breakup of the family. But despite the serious disagreements on this issue, Vanessa regularly visited her daughter-in-law and granddaughter, although the son has long since found a new family and well settled in the capital. As soon as Kelly remembered her father, there was an oppressive silence in the kitchen. It even seemed to her that the aroma of fried bread became emphasized defiant. She wanted to turn everything into a joke. Mom, it seems to me that even the air is hot in here. Now the bell would ring and our incomparable Baba Vanessa would appear with her exceptional recommendations. Kelly had no sooner taken a breath than there was indeed a knock at the door. Wendy's bell rang insistently. Startled, she looked reproachfully at her daughter. She was the last thing we needed early in the morning. And what was the fashion of showing up unannounced? On the way to the hallway, the landlady launched into a tirade against Vanessa. But when she opened the door, she was silenced because instead of her mother-in-law, she saw a brightly dressed woman with a ridiculous hairdo. Clara, the guests radiated joy. Here I am. Hi there. My family. I apologize for the short notice. I didn't have time, and my goods are unusual, perishable. The woman walked unceremoniously into the apartment, hitting the landlady with her powerful shoulder. She apologized immediately though. Sorry, Wendy. I almost boarded you, but it was your own fault for blocking the passage. Puffs of inordinate effort. Clara pulled out two suitcases and remarked contentedly, it's not a complete set. I've got two more cases in the storage locker. I'll go get them later. Kelly ran out into the hallway. The girl immediately recognized the guest. Mom, it's Aunt Clara. Don't you recognize your sister? Wendy sighed doomedly. Thank you, daughter, I know. 
Though I confess I didn't recognize her right away, such a drastic change. The guests laughed and continued the phrase not finished by the hostess so change. So the effect took place. I on the advice of a familiar stylist or makeup artist decided to completely change the image. My relative cooked so quickly that it was difficult to catch the meaning of the words she said. Complicated the situation. And the fact that during her fiery speech, the woman dragged suitcases into the room. And on this move, she did not even ask the permission of the owners. Wendy, dumbfounded by the unapologetic behavior of the visitors, asked Clara, sorry, and what do you have there in these suitcases? I have their very useful cargo, vitamins, checks, coffee, and I'll treat you. You can't come empty-handed. Clara lost her loins and turned to Kelly. Help your aunt move the bags away from the aisle. The girl looked questioningly at her mother. And Wendy made the most sensible suggestion. I don't think it's a good idea to drag those suitcases back and forth. Let them stand here, they don't bother anyone. I take it you're here on business, Clara. Wendy. Why the tone? We're relatives, and it's easier for us to address each other plainly. The guests sat down in a chair with a satisfied look and patted one bag with their hand. Kevin and I did an audit of our storage the other day and came to the conclusion that we have a surplus. And since the season is coming to an end, we need to sell this product as soon as possible. Such goods are cheap at our market. That's why I decided to come to you. I hope you don't mind. The smile faded from Clara's face. It was replaced by a look of wariness. Wendy, embarrassed, are you kidding again? Live and let love. Sell your tomatoes. Pears, apples, what pears? Wendy didn't immediately realize that the relative was talking about the contents of the alls. Wendy, there I have pears of three varieties and apples for tomatoes are not in season yet. The weather is bad. Last week, only seedlings in the ground poked. Of course, I have in the greenhouse and cucumbers, tomatoes, but not enough just for myself. Heaven told me. The owners never found out what Clara and her third husband said. The woman forcefully patted herself on the forehead with the palm of her hand and reached into her bottomless bag with a radiant smile. She pulled out a bag of assault rifles. It's all blown out of my mind. I've been saving them all the way to deliver them to the targets. It's a new strain. My Kevin identified it himself. Clara handed her sister the bag, and Wendy inhaled the scent. It smelled delightful. Thank you, Clara, for the guests. Really made me happy. Kelly looked at her watch mommy. I think you're late already? Wendy fussed. The bosses are not late, they're late. And does not forget daughter, that at my disposal personal transportation. So sister you cannot worry, we will pick up your valuable cargo and deliver it to the market. Before she left, the woman smiled. Kelly, you're right. There are a lot of good things in life, and it's nice to have relatives who can drop by unexpectedly. Clara asked her niece in surprise. What's wrong with her? It's nothing. It's just that before you arrived, my mother and I had a little argument about the meaning of life. Let's go and have some tea. I'd love to. I didn't have time for breakfast. On her way out, Clara followed Kelly into the kitchen. Previously, even before her parents' divorce, they used to go on vacation to two ups every year as a family. Wendy's cousin had always kept a small outhouse on the reservation for them. But after Liam ran away, family traditions changed, and Kelly spent her summers at camp. Or is it Grandma Vanessa's? Wendy herself used her vacation to write scientific articles. To her mother-in-law's fair comment Wendy, have you ruined yourself by working? The daughter-in-law reasonably replied, if I don't work, we'll starve to death together with Kelly. After all, your son refuses to help financially. Vanessa didn't like it when her daughter-in-law reminded her of that. But they were hardened by life's hardships. The woman found a way out of any situation. She defended her son in every way possible and blamed Wendy for everything. If you've a guest your husband, he would not have run away. And it's not too late to go to him for help. The crown will not fall from your head. Wendy immediately put a stop to such talk. I'm not going to humiliate myself in front of your son, does not want to fulfill his parental obligations. God is his judge. But Kelly sees and understands everything and is unlikely to forgive such a grief-stricken father. 
Indeed, for all eight years, the daughter has never once remembered her father. True, Grandma Vanessa regularly allocated her granddaughter money for pocket money. Aunt Clara with a noise from the bread came out hot tea. At least it warms the insides. Kelly, are you finishing school already? Not for another two years. Oh, so you and my babysitter are almost the same age. She's graduating this year. She wants to be an artist. I'm telling her not to, but she won't budge. I don't understand why girls are so eager to go on stage. What's so great about it? Kelly vaguely remembered. But the last time they'd been to her aunt's house, she hadn't been there at all. So the information about the strange girl had slipped past her consciousness. Just for the sake of propriety. The girl asked where was she going to go to college. Clara was not the type to get lost. Without a shadow of embarrassment, she blurted out the date. Do you have a college major? In my opinion, it's the best option. Your apartment is spacious, there's room for a relative. Aunt Clara took another sip of her drink with pleasure and closed her eyes. That's a nice, rich tea you got there. Kelly stared at the woman and thought her mother didn't even know that Clara had already distributed everything. The girl had heard quite a few stories before about their relatives, who had a habit of showing up like a snowball. But she never thought that she and her mother would also suffer the fate of the host. After all, now they will have to tolerate not only the aunt herself, it also led her daughter into their house. All day long, Clara rested. The next morning, they all set off together with the rest of the luggage. The guest herself loaded the bags into the trunk of the car and quite noticed. Now it was safe to go to the bazaar. Wendy decided that it was time to clarify the daily routine. Clara, I'm sorry, but I'm pressed for time. Of course, I'll take you to the market, but I don't think I can drive you back. The auntie also cheerfully said it's all right. We can manage on our own. Do you have an assistant? You didn't tell me anything yesterday. Wendy, I didn't know anything yesterday. My brain wasn't working after the long drive. And this morning, I thought it was Saturday, which meant Kelly would be free. There was a squeal of brakes. Then klaxons patched from all sides and running past the cars. Kelly did not have time to orient herself, and she was thrown into the front seat. The girl rebuked her mother. Mom, can you do this to all of us? You should have warned her that you were going to break. Clara joyfully announced, This is Kelly, your mother from Surprise. Apparently she's not to my liking. Wendy turned around. Guess your sister's not to her liking. I don't think my daughter belongs on the market. And what will people say if they see Kelly behind the counter? The department chair's daughter sells Wendy tomatoes, not tomatoes, pears and apples. How many times do I have to tell you? Optimism was flowing out of this active woman, and she wanted to share it with her relatives. Wendy, what are you chewing on? How is the market any worse than the grocery store? Personally, I don't see any difference, and then I'm not free. For a small favor, your Kelly will be rewarded. The girl immediately supported her aunt. Mom, Aunt Clara's right. She's gonna sell her own products. Wendy, I even have my papers. I got a certificate from our Ross Patrebnadzer. And if I have to, I can get a second opinion at the market. Come on, step on the gas. We're wasting time. Kelly was inspired by her new business. She saw trading on the market as an interesting adventure. Of course, the opportunity to make money was crucial. Despite a decent salary by today's standards, Wendy could not afford the planned expenses. Therefore, clothes, shoes, and other goods were purchased strictly on schedule. Sometimes it got a little tricky. Once in pursuit of a loyal price, they bought winter boots at the market. The girl had long dreamed of such stylish shoes and persuaded her mother. But she brought one for less than two weeks. Wendy assessed the damage with an expert's eye. Yes, they will definitely not take them to repair. And we will not be able to make a claim to him, because they did not take the check. We'll have to buy new ones. But at the moment, alas, nothing will work, because the plan is to buy wallpaper for the kitchen. So daughter wait until the next paycheck. Kelly objected mommy, what am I going to wear to school? Do I have to swathe my legs with both of yours? The woman shook her head. I don't even know how to be or what to think of. Listen, daughter. There on the mezzanine lying my work, in which I go to the forest. They're a little too big for you, but with a warm sock, they'll be comfortable. 
Kelly was torn. Mom, do you want me to embarrass myself in front of everyone on purpose? But imagine what they'll say about you when I show up at school in these ugly shoes. Kelly had hit the bullseye. The girl knew very well that her mother was very careful about her personal reputation. Wendy gave in and gave her daughter the last of her savings to buy another pair of shoes. But in doing so, she warned her daughter. I hope you realize that now you'll have to sacrifice buying a new jacket. Kelly started bitching to her mom. That's not fair. It's very fair. You're the one who bought the bad product, so you have to suffer. The girl's mother's decision had to be accepted. On the tempting offer of the aunt gave her heart hope that she could still buy a jacket. From the list of the latest trends. Since the niece did not understand anything in the market trade, the aunt herself engaged in the organization of the process, and she instructed to monitor the safety of the goods. Watch out, my good girl. There is such a crowd here that they'll break it and you won't even notice. Kelly smiled at Shepkin, and the phrases were sometimes so funny. While the aunt drew up the necessary documents, the girl tried to mentally visualize the process, but came to the conclusion that it was impossible to carry it out discreetly. She was only distracted for a few minutes, but it was enough time for a teenager who passed by. He grabbed a bag from the edge of the street and dashed along the aisles. What the kid didn't know was that Kelly was the district junior biathlon champion, a boomerang in the form of a big apple, which was given to her niece by her aunt, caught up with the boys in just the third second. The blow came between the shoulder blades and the guy howled in pain. There were cheers of approval. Well done, the girl famously molded, but not enough. At that moment, the aunt appeared. Seeing the unfortunate bag and apple, she immediately realized that I almost cuckooed, and I felt sorry for the goods and apple. A rare variety of my Kevin himself bred. Kelly's mood immediately dropped. She couldn't forgive herself for embarrassing herself in front of her aunt in the first few minutes. But Clara did not dwell on this little incident. She patted her niece approvingly on the shoulder. And I did not know that you so aptly dream of apples. True, I managed to catch only the final part, when the kid howled from the blow. But it was impressive. I will. I'll call you today. I'll tell you about your feet. Aunt Clara, is that a feat? It's just an automatic reaction. I've been a biathlete since I was 10 years old. My dad got me into a sports school. The auntie made some kind of an incomprehensible noise, and then she asked, Do you even see everything with him? No, my mom won't let me. And honestly, I don't want to. You grow up like that, and then they turn their faces away from you. It's not for me to judge. I don't know what happened between Wendy and Liam, but they were always such a nice couple, so polite and friendly. They came to visit us every year. Clara, you're on, you're distracting me. You're making me feel like we're wasting our time and we're gonna be out of business. In case you've forgotten, that's why we came here. We've been doing a lot of business. Oiko gifts and nurseries looked impressive. The famous pears especially attracted the eyes of buyers. The weight of one fruit was half a kilo or even more, and the fruit looked very respectable. Kelly was already in her mind calculating the projected profits. But Clara warned her not to charge too much. It's easier to attract a buyer and the process will go faster. I don't want to sit here for three days and then I have to go home. I'm looking at a prom dress and shoes. Oh, by the way, you can advise me on this. Kelly has been kidnapped by her aunt's trust. She was liking the perky woman more and more by the minute. She mentally compared her to her mother and had to admit that Wendy's only advantage was her academic title. While the girl was busy with her thoughts, Clara was soliciting customers. Do not pass by apples, pennies, buy my southern goods and children and adults need, and those who buy two kilos discount from the company. Kelly watched the aunt, and she also very much wanted to throw away all the conventions and try herself in the role of invitations. But she imagined how her mother would react to such an initiative and the hunt was gone at once. The girl filled bags with fresh goods, and Clara weighed and accepted payment. Already by lunchtime they had sold out almost the entire stock of products. The aunt counted Kelly's receipts. The result was even better than I expected, but as promised, 10% for you. The girl took the money she had earned and hid it in a different harmonica, just in case, she suggested. 
Aunt Clara, maybe we should stay a couple more hours to sell off the leftovers? The woman looked around in a deliberately demonstrative manner and said very loudly that we could handle a little longer. Our product was a big hit. There was something ostentatious, even theatrical, in the aunt's behavior. And the girl asked in a whisper, Aunt Clara, what's wrong with you? You leaned under the counter and quietly answered us. Honey, we've got to get out of here. There's a good chance we're going to get beat up. You see those nice people at the stall, the cattle, the debt. Kelly looked in the direction her aunt had pointed and felt uneasy. Groups of southern-looking men were talking to each other and pointing at them. Clara, she whispered at my command, pull off the anchors and reception to the exit. You grab the empty suitcases and crates. The main thing is we run and don't turn around. If we do, they'll catch up with us. The woman didn't have time to finish her sentence, I'll leave her alone. The man approached the counter. One with a noticeable accent. He asked the beautiful apples, do you have any? Aunt Clara said with a sunny smile on her face, dear gentlemen, the shop is closed. Insistent customers began to demand that the shop was closed. And everyone is still selling. A second fruit lover intervened. He was so nasty, very swarthy, brown eyes, but no beard or hair. Altogether it looked like the man was training to be a clown, but then changed direction. A beautiful woman, mean as a fox. Why poach customers? And how wrong? You're supposed to be penalized for it. That's the rules. So they began to surround their place of business. But they didn't know who they were dealing with. Clara clutched her satchel and bellowed at the top of her voice. And Kelly's on me. The market racketeers were confused. They did not expect such a jump from a provincial aunt in a ridiculous Tolstoy with Mickey Mouse on her chest and parted. Those precious seconds were enough for the women to run to the exit. But then their luck changed. Or maybe it was just the women's strength wasn't enough to cover the long distance. They were surrounded and Clara whispered, I think it's starting to smell bad. Kelly, as soon as those faces came near us, they started screaming. This is a nice place to help us out. Tomorrow we'll go to another market to sell the leftovers. The girl did as the aunt instructed. On their shouts instantly ran away gawkers, among whom was a very active young man, without finding out the circumstances of the incident. He began to work with his fists, now began to already shout losers. By this time, police officers had just arrived. They did not begin to sort things out on the spot, but loaded everyone into the car, to the police station. We'll see who's right and who's guilty. We've seen all sorts of things, but this is the first time. I mean, come on. A woman and a girl standing up to the local racketeers. We should probably cut that gang a little slack. Wendy almost lost her senses when Clara called her and calmly said, Wendy, Kelly and I are at the police station. I'll tell you all about it later. Now help us out. The head of the department hurried to the internal affairs department and frightened by her sister's story, she hardly realized what had happened. She did not fail to rebuke her relative. Clara, okay, you're an adult, but why drag a child into an unpleasant story? Kelly decided to defend her aunt. Mom, I'm not a child, and it's not Aunt Clara's fault. They started pressuring us. What were we supposed to do? Wouldn't you want the outcome to be any different? You're a smart woman. Yeah, I think I got it. When the police drew up the reports and the women were released, the aunt asked Wendy's sister to help out that young man. He stood up for us right away. Basically, if it hadn't been for him, there's no telling what would have happened to us. In the compartment behind the bars sat an inseparable group of citizens who had decided to press Aunt Clara. A little farther away waited to decide their fate. A young man of athleticism, physique. Clara looked at the young man with adoration. How handsome is the real Apollo? I would like such a son-in-law. Wendy looked at her relative so that she immediately ran out of steam. However, she complied with Clara's request and charged the unfamiliar young man when they were on the street. The boy said, I know you, Wendy. I studied at your institute, and then my parents went to Peter and I transferred. The woman looked at the young man's face for a long time and then exclaimed, I remember you. You still took part in the discussion club. There was a meeting with young scientists. That's right. Me maxed, just in case. 
and the young man looked at Kelly with interest. And you're good, smarty pants, screamed louder than a siren. Competent tactics, the most important thing in the first minutes to disorient the enemy. The girl was embarrassed, but responded with a compliment. My aunt taught me that. But still, if you had not intervened in time, my aunt and I would not have been well. They have such mean eyes. Max laughed. You shouldn't look your opponent in the eye. That's the most common mistake. I hope you won't have to fight off any more bullies. Clara watched the young people with amusement. Wendy, what a lovely couple. Do you want to get married now? Clara, you're crazy. Kelly's only 15. And you're her saint for the first guy she meets. And in front of the police station. What did I say wrong? Wendy, why do you keep sticking to me? The couple is really beautiful. Just like you and Liam when you were young. It was just a little too brazen. And Wendy decided to put a stop to the market show. She said so bluntly, Clara, I get the unpleasant impression that you can put on a show anywhere, whether it's the market or the police. Kelly's our date. The head of the department looked at the car, and his stately figure disappeared into the night. The events of the next day tired the women, and they had a hasty supper and went to bed. Aunt Clara left on Monday, but promised that Emily would come very soon in her place. Even on the first day of her arrival, the aunt had praised her daughter at every turn. My Emily has so many talents. She sings, and she used to dance at one time, then she went to a studio. Last year she took a makeup course. She took lessons online, but they gave her a real certificate. Kelly kept silent, because her talents were only diplomas and medals for biathlon competitions. So she really wanted to meet this mysterious Emily. Wendy sat in front of a large mirror and looked at her reflection with surprise. There was no time to be distracted by conversation. Only occasionally did she express her fantasy ideas aloud. Aunt Wendy, don't you look familiar? Now we will make a little more frivolous and bangs and get a completely new image. Without waiting for the approval of the client, the girl knocked down while dressing in the hall. Now we will fix the whole construction in time. By the way, I recommend the latest product does not spoil the hair and firmly holds the style. Synchronously use just such means. Wendy gave her personal stylist a belittling look. Wendy, I think it's enough that I don't want to look like a white crow because the conference will be attended by luminaries of science. And I'm afraid that my evening hairstyle will look ridiculous at this strict event. The girl wasn't even embarrassed. Aunt Wendy's a beauty. Nowhere to be found. And scientists are made of the same dough as ordinary people. Therefore, they too are able to admire beautiful women and even often do stupid things. Wendy began and once again looked critically at her reflection. Kelly decided it was time for her to intervene. Mom, stop complaining. You really do look amazing. And I got a wink from my companion. And she continued to push her line. Aunt Wendy, all that's left to do is match your hair to your closet. I saw a nice cream blouse with a blue velvet skirt. It'll look very harmonious. But please don't wear any jackets or ridiculous costume jewelry, you'll ruin everything. Wendy waved her hands helplessly. I wanted to complete the brooch set with her and Ruby. It's a piece of jewelry I inherited from my grandmother. Oni looked at the woman with judgment. And it would be acceptable if they were sapphires or emeralds. But rubies are too flashy. And then today, bulky jewelry is out of style. Put your heirloom in the jewelry box. Kelly brought her gold-plated pin. It's lying there cosmetically. Wendy even flinched. What pin? You shouldn't be overreacting. Aunt Wendy is a very stylish accessory, and such small details quite successfully fulfill the mission of the proverbial highlight. Now you'll see for yourself. Not more than half an hour passed, and Wendy already looked at her reflection in a completely different way. Emily, you are magic. I did not even think that in just a couple of hours you can so dramatically transform a person's appearance. Kelly fixed the pin. Emily is a true unicum. By the way, they're having their college premiere tonight. They're playing one of the lead roles. Debutante, whispered Kelly, and Wendy shifted her gaze from the mirror to her niece. Emily, what on earth have you been quiet about? Such an event, if I can make it, I would love to join you. It's been so long since I've been to the theater. 
Emily blushed and threw an angry glance in Kelly's direction. Aunt Wendy, this is just our term play. I mean, it's practically amateur level. And I'm not sure you're going to like the show. And the themes are a little shallow. The woman was puzzled. I get the impression you don't want me to be there for you. Kelly came to the rescue again. Mom doesn't really want me to, but she's afraid you'll underestimate her acting ability. Oh my God, I'm not a theater critic. I can only judge as a layman. Okay guys, I'll talk to you later. I'm gonna be late for check-in. When did Wendy's door close? Kelly said thoughtfully. Emily, ever since you've been in our house, mom's been unrecognizable. I get the impression that she has an admirer. Is that a bad thing? My mom's living the high life. What was your love affair with Kevin? It seemed like forever. But the man would slip up a little and Clara would give him a hot kick in the ass. And she's alone now. What about breeding new varieties of apples, pears, and other crops? After all, according to the stories of Aunt Clara, a specialist in this case, she smirked. There are a lot of such specialists only in Tuops alone. And my mom is not used to grieving. And now David is sweating on her plantation instead of Kevin. Not a bad guy, but a little old. Honestly, I don't know how you can get married so often. Personally, I'd like to be married once and for all. Everyone wants to, but it's almost unrealistic. Take your mom, for example. She's only 42 years old. Women that age still have babies. She's doomed herself to loneliness. And there's another stereotype that needs to be broken. Commitment to one profession with such a life position can be warmed up and left at a broken trough. And what to do? Give me a hint, since you're so smart. It doesn't take much intelligence. I'll take my mother as an example again. You think she was born a complete primitive. No, Clara speaks five foreign languages. For almost 15 years, she taught school and then college. But one day her mother realized she didn't want to work for a degrading salary. First, she took up translations, and later she switched to the resort business with the help of her husband's. Mom built three outhouses, and now she has a stable and good income. Despite her positive attitude toward Aunt Clara and Emily, Kelly did not see her mother as a cheap homeowner. The rejection was so strong that the girl shrugged. Oh no, I'd rather have my mom stay on as department chair, instead of sitting next to her. The mistake is yours and your mom's. That you are far from real life, I'm just giving examples. And that doesn't mean you have to repeat my mother's path. Modern business is multifaceted. And Wendy, with her knowledge, could find a decent and very lucrative occupation. By the way, you should think about it too. Kelly hesitantly objected, I think so. Economists are needed everywhere today, she sighed. That's right, they are needed. But it's one thing to serve someone, quite another to work for yourself. She looked at her friend with an inquisitive gaze. I'm sorry to intrude on your privacy. But if I were you, I'd have tracked down my dad a long time ago. That day, if my mom finds out, she'll tear me apart like a cap, but you make sure that my mom doesn't find out. You're a big girl, and you can make your own life. You know, Emily, as a sister and a friend, I've been thinking about this for a long time. And what's stopping you? Shame and fear. Shame of imposing. And fear of being misunderstood. Not by a disheveled short haircut. Kelly, you're not really out of this world. Yeah, your dad's gonna be over the moon. But you haven't forgotten him. Men at an advanced age have a very different outlook on life. They reevaluate their priorities. Kelly cried out, Mercy, my unstable mind. My brain can't process so much new information. True, I understood the main message of finding my father. The girl covered her eyes and smiled. You know, Emily, it was my dad who taught me to love sports. He did a lot for me in general. My mom was always stuck in her institute, and he took me to the skating rink. And then he left quietly. She hugged the girl. Okay, don't get too depressed. We should get ready for college. I'll admit, my inner three bitches had already started to kick in. Kelly decided to cheer up her relative. Don't worry, it's gonna be okay. In fact, it's great to have you. Emily, you're a friend and a sister in one. Reason for your confession, and I hope you'll listen to me. Kelly had long ago willingly surrendered herself to the mercy of her companion's snoring. She tried to follow her advice because she wanted to be as confident as she was. 
and in just three years of school from the girl's best friend, she had changed a lot. Wendy noticed these changes, but considered them positive. A bright sunny day was replaced by inclement weather. Moreover, weather metamorphosis occurred with surprising speed. First, the sky darkened, then the wind came. About the same feelings raged in Emily's soul. She could barely hold back tears, despair, and spectacularly clasped hands. I knew it. My liver sensed it was going to be a total failure. Told those knuckleheads that this play would be a failure. Kelly asked, tell me, who are we talking about? I mean, who are these narrow-minded people? Trevor and Betty. Fucking theater people. Guys, everyone's gonna freak out about our play. She artificially executed her fellow students who took the play. She did this parody from the heart, and even with a PR person. After a short pause, the girl as if to summarize the result was not wrong. Indeed, the commission was at least half an hour in shock. They didn't call our performance an ugly performance for nothing. Kelly said yeah, it wasn't great, but it was fun. I bet it was. Everyone in the audience was looking up with laughter. Where else can you see a wolf on a scooter and a family? I'm not talking about the grandmother and her hilarious arrangement of a bun named Boo Boo. But the one that struck me the most, in my opinion, was Little Red Riding Hood. I mean, you had to pull off a fairy tale plot like that. Kelly stroked her foot on her arm. But your bunny looked pretty good against that background. Yeah, it was a good play. It's just that your directors were a little ahead of the curve in some places. She sighed. I realize you're coming on to me, but in my opinion, I think you've gone completely overboard and we'll have to take the exam separately. The board made it pretty clear to us that we mutilated the classics. They definitely liked The Wolf Investigator, but they said that the topical theme should have been reflected in a different way. We got the appeal, not the denial. It's a good thing Wendy wasn't here. Our art would have made her hair stand on end. They're no good to themselves because it's hardly your fault. The girl cried. You're wrong, Kelly. The failure was my fault. It was my idea. But those two dumbass morons turned it 180 degrees, and it was obvious at the dress rehearsal. But we were all rusty. We wanted to see how our professors would teach. To my mind, that's exactly what happened. Were you able to get the effect you wanted from Kelly? How about if you get creative that way? I can see what would happen. It can't, don't. One experiment is enough. Are you right? I think I should stop here. But that doesn't mean it's game over. Kelly looked anxiously at her friend, wondering if she was up to something else. The girl was suddenly amused. You know, I realized that I'm a lousy actress, to put it mildly. And what's the point of pushing in the background? I'm gonna try a new role. You want to drop out, but you've only got a little time left. No, sis, I'm not dropping out. I could use an extra diploma. I'm going to study to be a makeup artist. By the way, very rare and in demand today profession. Such specialists are needed not only in the theater and cinema. You can still make fabulous money in the ritual services. Kelly pulled her eyes out in fright. You're crazy to do makeup on a dead person. It's totally lame. You don't understand this market. We're not gonna make it in this market. Kelly didn't have time to digest the information she'd gotten, but her friend pushed her painfully in the side. I think we're being followed. Tom, like two idiots, Kelly carefully turned his head. Who's following? You imagined it? No, it's definitely following us. Remember the two guys out front? I think that's them. It's definitely them. Kelly nodded affirmatively because she remembered the faces of the guys who had toured them. But it was still light and there were people walking in the park. So the girlfriends also decided to relax a bit and talk at the same time. But when the weather started to deteriorate rapidly, all the walkers scattered to their homes. Kelly asked anxiously what we were going to do. They're following us. Maybe it's just a coincidence. Let's pretend nothing's going on for now. I say we take a sharp turn back it'll surprise them. And then we've got to get out of the park and we're in a cul-de-sac. Good for you, girlfriend. I hadn't really thought of that. Make it three more. Let's turn around. Aha. Uh -huh. And if anything, I start yelling like Aunt Clara taught me. What happened next was more like a freak accident. The girls turned around on cue, which puzzled the guys. 
one of them stepped forward to offer his help. But a shrieking squeal of a knee put the companions in a state of stupor. Emily followed her friend's example, and the guys were frightened even more clamped with fear the girl's eyes squealed selflessly, not noticing what was going on around her. They were replenished after someone started shaking them by the shoulders. That brought them to their senses. When Kelly opened her eyes, she saw a guy who looked familiar. But since the environment was not conducive to memories, she screamed again. The young man asked loudly, Calm down. What happened? Can you explain? Kelly looked to the side where the two guys who had been following them were still standing in confusion. The stranger who had brought Kelly to her senses repeated his question. Someone explain what happened here. One of the guys came out of his titanic state. Not crazy. We were just walking along, minding our own business, not bothering anybody. They came at us and started yelling like they were being stabbed. Emily raised her voice. That's not true. You were following us. How do we know what's on your mind? The guy retorted resentfully, who cares about you? We were just going about our business. And when those fools turned around and thought they needed help, they started squealing. Things were heating up again. The EMTs decided to separate the warring parties. Let's assume there was a misunderstanding. A couple of stalkers headed for the exit, but they went no more than 50 meters as the one who called the girlfriends. The crazies turned around. Such lunatics should be isolated so they don't throw themselves at people. The few gawkers who had escaped all quietly dispersed at the shouts. Only the guy who seemed unfamiliar remained. The girls silently looked at each other, and they summarized the day. Yeah, we sure didn't have a good day today, Kelly added, but in my opinion, the second part turned out much cooler than your reporting performance. A young man intervened in the discussion. Girls, I don't know what you're talking about, but I'm ready to escort you home. Emily sneered, of course. Is it possible for two crazy people to walk around town? I didn't say that. The guy looked at Kelly. You know, I recognized you right away. The girl had already fully recovered and even smiled. Your face looked familiar to me too. But I can't remember where I've seen you before. Don't you remember the incident at the market? About three years ago, it was in the spring. I remembered you and your aunt very well. They took us to the police. Kelly was jumping up and down with joy. That's it, I remember you, Max. The young man jokingly replied, that's right. Emily silently watched the meeting of two old acquaintances. Max and Kelly chatted on the way home, and she didn't even have a chance to get a word in edgewise. She didn't try to absorb the meaning of their conversation, because her mind gave the thought from the looks of such a quiet girl, how quickly the guys handled. Her mother talked about the adventure at the market, but did not describe the fellows who had come to her and Kelly's rescue. The girl suddenly felt very irritated and turned to her friend, Kelly good kindly, let's go home. I'm going to sleep right here. There was already waiting for them at home. Wendy, where have you girls been? I was getting worried. Kelly beat her sister to the punch. Mom's fine. We just went for a little walk with my foot after the play. And you know who we met? I don't know, daughter. Remember, Aunt Clara came to visit us, and we were selling at the market. How could I not remember? You got into a fight and I had to drag you out of the police station. Oh ha. And there was your former student, Max. Can you believe it, Mom? He's the one we met today. Kelly was glowing with joy. Wendy was pleasantly surprised, too. Yeah, amazing things happen in life. The daughter and her mother were having a nice conversation, but they'd forgotten about Emily. What hurt her most was that her aunt didn't even remember her premiere. That night, Jealousy and envy tied Emily's soul into one strong knot. Like any mother, Wendy was worried about her daughter. Rapidly developing romance of her daughter with Max turned into a major problem for her. First and foremost, the parent was concerned about the age difference. Max was older than Kelly by five years, which means that he had a completely different view of relationships with girls. Several times, the woman tried to remind her daughter to be careful in her relationships with men. Kelly, at your age, it is very easy to make mistakes. The girl defiantly objected to her mother. So you are my mother, you advise me to wait another 10 years, but who will need, as Aunt Clara put it, overripe and fruity? Kelly, don't exaggerate. 
that's not what I wanted to tell you. I wanted to tell you that it's not uncommon for girls in love to lose their ability to reason. And then they pay for it. Wendy, she was embarrassed to talk openly about certain things with her daughter. But Emily did not pick up expressions and always chopped from the shoulder. Since in this matter, she was completely solidarity aunt. She too, has often commented on Kelly and Max's romantic encounters. All guys are nice at first, but once they get their way, they won't even wave goodbye. The sad thing is, girlfriend, there are often consequences after a touching love affair. And it's not only the broken heart of the girl, but children out of wedlock. Emily spoke with pathos, and Wendy blushed at her remarks. Under the pressure of two women at once, Kelly was losing it, but she didn't give up. You two are in cahoots, aren't you? My Max is not so decent and not capable of doing bad things. Emily had gotten comfortable with the role of mentor. How naive are you, girlfriend? You should listen to what your elders tell you. I mean, you're only two years older than me, and listen to you, so you know everything and know everything. Then how come you don't have a boyfriend yet? Emily glared at you. I just didn't throw myself at the first guy I saw. The argument was beginning to take on the tones of a conflict, and Wendy decided to have her say, Girls, stop fighting. We don't need to get into a fight over a disagreement. Although Kelly had always had a docile disposition and often gave in to one-liners. This time, she was being pretty aggressive. I'm sick of having a babysitter sticking her nose into everything I do. I'd rather have her watch her own back, but she's talking out of her ass. Do you believe her, Mom? Kelly, calm down. You can't do that. Emily is our guest, so let her behave like one. She's used to being the boss around here. She wouldn't shut up and started insulting us. She's a hysterical little brat. And then it came back. And you're an artist from a burned-out theater. Wendy had never raised her voice to her daughter in her life. And now she's yelling at her daughter. Stop this outrage right now. What are you making a scene for? The girls went their separate ways, but each had his own opinion. Kelly thought that her friend had made the scene out of jealousy, and she was not far from the truth. And the knot in Emily's soul has already coiled strings of hatred, and the thought ripples in the sand. What kind of trash? I already think she's going to tear her hair out on herself. The girls didn't leave their rooms until the evening, and Wendy tried to find the perfect way to reconcile the parties. Emily also refused. So the first attempt ended in failure. In the morning at breakfast, the girls also looked at each other angrily. Wendy made several more attempts, but they also failed. Then she decided to give up on the girls' weight loss. Let the grown-ups sort it out for themselves, I have enough to do without them. Indeed, Wendy was not to love tragedies. In recent months in their institute began to occur unpleasant changes. Yesterday, the teaching staff learned about the upcoming optimization. They were explained that these changes are due to the fact that their educational institution will now be supervised by a completely different department. But the head of the department was 100% sure that no one would cut her down. Only idiots would think of closing the leading departments in the institute. Unfortunately, such idiots were found. Wendy had heard about it from the rector. Simon as a young lady, modestly dimming his eyes, began from afar. Wendy, my dear, you are aware of the transformations that are taking place in our institute. The woman answered briefly, yes. The rector is in his supervisor's chair. Unfortunately, it is not an easy process, and it involves some unpleasantness. The subordinates decided to help the head of Simon. Tell me directly about the coming trouble. The man exhaled. If you yourself insist, I will say, the leadership from above decided, and he knows better, that it makes no sense to keep several specialized educational institutions on the balance sheet. So they decided to disband our institute. Not exactly. Dear Wendy, in this case, the word condense would be more appropriate. The man is nasty, he giggled and mined with his hands. What does this compaction process look like? Something like this. But the core departments will remain, if I understand you correctly. My department is in no danger of closing. Simon was completely confused. He took a handkerchief out of his pocket and began to rub his forehead vigorously. The higher authorities decided to merge the chemistry departments of our institute and the state university. But it's wrong. 
We have the biggest competition every year. If we reduce the number of places, it will increase even more. What can we do, Wendy? We're just a bunch of little pigs. It's not up to us to decide what's best. Simon completed the unpleasant mission and quickly calmed down. A confident and even haughty note appeared in his voice. I put you on notice. The woman was indignant. So you're just putting me out on the street. After 17 years on the job. Wendy, why are you being sentimental now? Nobody's kicking you out. You'll be a regular teacher, but that's just for a while. Then maybe a good position will come along. All right, I'll take the teaching job. The chief immediately picked up on it. Don't be in a hurry to accept, because there's only a part-time position available at the moment. The woman felt bad then and took two deep breaths. She slowly got up from her chair. She really wanted to say everything she thought of him to this accolade's face. But Wendy was not the kind of woman to give in to emotion. She confidently refused the chief's offer, and Simon offered the part-time job to someone else. But no one would take it, and you expect me to take it. I mean, that's what you were counting on. You thought I'd jump like a dog on a bone. But no, I'm turning down your tempting offer. I think I'll let someone very close to you take the part-time job. Who do you have in mind? Wendy? The ones who come to your appointments with a tube of Vaseline. Simon shrieked. I don't get the implication. Ask your secretary, she'll explain it to you clearly. Wendy carefully closed the door behind her. At the secretary's questioning look, she said the chief was digesting new information. I advise you not to disturb him. The girl darted her eyes away. She didn't understand why the always poised chair of the chemistry department was acting so defiantly today. Wendy didn't know what was happening to her. But after she had said everything in the eyes of the chief, she became euphoric. However, it did not last long. After awakening consciousness, the woman began to worry about a thought. What should we do with the tape now? She could not find an answer to this question. At home, another surprise awaited her in the form of a note on the table from her niece. Aunt Wendy for me. Don't worry, I've moved into the dormitory. The woman attributed Emily's sudden departure to last night's scandal. Oh my God, what kind of day is this? Not enough trouble at work. The girls had a falling out. That same night, Wendy went to the theater college dormitory, but they were surprised to find out who she was looking for. She had been expelled from the college for truancy and poor academic performance. She picked up her papers as recently as last week. The relative was shocked to hear the news. Maybe you can tell me where to find her? The woman who introduced herself as the commandant looked at the visitors with distrust. Who would you be to her? An aunt, you might say. Mom and I are third cousins. Why do you ask? The receptionist looked at her strangely again. No sooner had your niece disappeared than her friends and acquaintances came here in droves. She's a sociable girl. Who did she borrow money from? She promised someone a lot of money. So I'm looking for the girl. Really, you and your aunt haven't come before. I understand that all interested parties should not talk about your visit. Better not. Wendy was shocked by the news, which she immediately shared with Kelly. She too, took a long time to come to her senses. Mom, but it can't be. I've been with her most of the time. I never noticed anything like this about her. It wasn't until Max and I started dating. It was like she was switched, switched, switched. Wendy rushed to her room surprised by her mother's behavior. Kelly followed her. Mom jumped up so quickly. The woman's performance dug through the drawers and shelves of the closet. Mom, tell me, what are you looking for? Maybe I can help you? No, daughter. No one can help us now. The woman sank down on the bed without strength and came in laughing hysterically like a nice girl from two ups. She lived with us for three years, drank and ate delicious food and took both. The laughter was replaced by tears. Wendy was not just crying, but sobbing. Amy Kelly tried to calm her mother, but her entreaties had the opposite effect. With great difficulty, the girl forced the woman to drink sedative drops. The medicine worked quickly. Wendy, still sobbing, howled, but was already able to speak calmly. Kelly, you and I are complete fools. The girl corrected her mother in the feminine would be correct. It's the right word for us. Emily cleaned us out. My jewelry and my grandmother's choker brooch are gone. 
no money either. Considering I'm out of work now and I know you and I are gonna live. Mom, what are you talking about? Just yesterday you were talking about grand plans, and today you're out of a job. That's right my girl. There's a change at the institute. They're closing my department. I gotta find something. You mean like a dry cleaner or something? Wendy didn't sound optimistic, and Kelly looked bitterly at her mother. She knew they were in for a rough time, and mentally sent rocks from the sky and other unpleasantness down on Nina's head with her sadness. She decided to share with Max. Of course, she didn't say anything about her intentions to the girls and her mother. Max was well-versed in the intricacies of modern business. He had graduated from a commercial university in the northern capital and now worked in a large construction company. Max tried several times to enlighten Kelly in these matters, but she could not remember even the basics. Max, I beg you not to waste your time. My brain refuses to accept such knowledge. I get a headache right away. Then why did you go to economics? What kind of specialist will you be? The girl laughed cheerfully. Anything? I'll sit quietly like a mouse in a small office and calculate wages. A person should strive for the highest goal and to achieve it to use everything to the maximum. Max, I used to have my mom say that too for many years she followed this rule and ended up with nothing. They were strolling through the city after the movie and this news made the young man freeze in place, like nothing. You mean to tell me that Wendy no longer teaches at the Institute? That's exactly what I'm saying. Of course, she's been offered a job, but the terms were so humiliating that she turned it down. Yeah, tragic, you might say. No, Max, that's an incomplete picture. We were also robbed. Did you report it to the police? No, mom doesn't want to. She's in the habit of protecting her reputation. The point is, we've probably been robbed. Emily, you must remember her. We were in the park together then. Max stretched out uncertainly. The young man fell back into prostration. But Kelly did not find his behavior strange. A few minutes passed and he came to his senses. Of course I remember your sister, funny girl. You know, a few days ago she and I were chatting online, and she mentioned she was going on a trip. Yeah, well, Emily knows how to spend other people's money. Kelly, maybe it's not her. I'd like to think so, but there's no one else. I wonder why you're defending her. I'm all about justice. The easiest thing to do is to blame the person. What about Wendy's employment? I'm sure I'll think of something. I can't leave my fiancé's mom in the lurch. Kelly noticed that Max was trying to avoid a topic that was unpleasant for him, and she did not prevent it, because she herself did not want to bring up Emily. She found the hint of a quick wedding more enticing than discussing the theft in their apartment. Max, you're so sure my mom would agree. The guy laughed at Kelly. I'm going to propose to you, not your mom. But you're gonna have to wait a little while. I've got a very risky venture, but if it works out, I'll be a millionaire in no time. Max, maybe it's better not to take the risk. As a famous French woman used to say, he who doesn't take risks doesn't drink champagne. Did you know that Madame was the widow of a banker? No, I don't. And please don't prophesize a widow's fate for me. Is that an unfortunate example? Like most young girls, Kelly was in love with Max. He quickly became her biggest idol, and she tried to overlook his flaws. The main disadvantage of the guy was his habit of giving out promises, but he very rarely kept them. So it happened in the situation with Wendy. The future son-in-law could well assist the woman in employment, but he forgot about his promise to help the mother of the bride after five minutes. Kelly decided not to remind him mentally. She reassured herself, it's not a big deal. Everyone has flaws. Max will get better with time, I'm sure of it. And I can help my mom myself. The girl remembered Emily's advice to ask her father for help. She did not say a word to her mother and went to the dacha to Grandma Vera. The old woman was genuinely pleased to see her granddaughter. Kelly, you can't imagine how happy I am. You've forgotten all about me. Even stopped calling. The girl felt the paint sticking to her face. Grandma recently had so much to do. So many different events happened. Not all of them pleasant. Vanessa wasn't even surprised. I had a bad feeling. Let me guess. Trouble happened with Wendy. Kelly couldn't contain her surprised gasp. Grandma, you're a psychic. 
you're allowed to make appointments for money, and she's a glue forest, so spit it out. What happened there? The girl briefly described the problem and at the end added, I do not want to impose, but maybe dad would not refuse to help us. They remembered when they were in a hurry. The granddaughter looked at her grandmother judgmentally. Mom doesn't know I'm here. I never said anything about my plans, so it's your initiative. The girl nodded in affirmation. And Vanessa, after a short silence, voiced her verdict. It's commendable that you're starting to live with your own mind. It means that you're all grown up and can make your own decisions. It's easy to meet your father. The woman winked enigmatically at her granddaughter. You Kelly are in the right place at the right time. The girl clapped her hands. Daddy is here visiting you. You guessed it. He should be here soon. A friend invited him. They're working out some important issues. Simon was as happy as his daughter about the unexpected meeting. He couldn't take his eyes off the girl. You're all grown up now, Kelly. How many years have we not seen you? Daddy, that's a pop quiz. I can't tell you exactly. Probably 10 years, maybe all of them. 12, 11 will be a month from now. I remember that day well. Anyway, let's not talk about the sad stuff. You better tell me. You haven't given up on biathlon. Remember when I took you to the sports school? Dad, I remember everything, but big sport is not for me. He told me to evaluate my abilities. When I played for the school, I was successful. Simon got sad. You don't have to go on. I know what you're going to say. When I went to college, I didn't have time for sports. Kelly countered not exactly. In the winter, I regularly train and even compete for the institute. But this is a completely different level. The girl waited for her father to ask about her mother. But the man asked his daughter about anything, but kept silent about the main thing. It was as if he was afraid of hurting a sore wound. Vanessa watched her son's torment from the sidelines and decided to intervene. You're acting like a boy. It's not your age to hide in the bushes. You were all over me yesterday asking about Wendy. Now you're wandering around. The man tried to stop the mother. Mom, all in good time. Let me talk to my daughter. I'm not interrupting. You don't have to talk when there's serious business to be done. The trouble your Wendy's in is she's too proud to ask for help. The man raised his eyebrows in surprise. I called her about a month ago, and she said everything was fine. It was Kelly's turn to be surprised at her father's words. You called your mom. What's so surprising about that? We call regularly, and I've sent money over the years. Unfortunately, I couldn't get here sooner. Why not? The man smirked. My job is so secret, you might say. Simon laughed lightly. Kelly looked at her father and tried to digest what she had just learned from him. Daddy, can you tell me why you left mom and me? Who told you such nonsense? I didn't leave you. Mom decided we needed to be apart. Sometimes people live together for a long time and then suddenly realize they're strangers. So I left quietly, without a fight. I thought it would be for a short time, but it turned out to be years. So you have another family. I have no one. I'm a one lover. Simon talked for a long time about his foreign life, and his daughter looked at him with admiration. When Vanessa began to blow her nose outside the window, she began to chew on her granddaughter's right. Kelly, you have to go or your mother will be worried. I understand that you didn't warn her that you were coming to me. You didn't warn your grandmother. The girl started to pack without any desire to go, and her father went to see her off when she got on the train. He said confidently, Daughter, now everything will be different for us. I'll help you if mom doesn't refuse to accept my help. Kelly's soul was struggling with the most contradictory feelings. She resented her parents for not being able to keep the family together because of their own ambitions. But at the same time, she felt sorry for them because they had robbed themselves of so many years of happiness. She came home devastated. Wendy fiddled in the kitchen and asked in a colorless voice, where did you disappear for so long? Max called me, he lost you too. I was at my grandmother's cottage. The connection's bad there. Why did you suddenly take off? Couldn't you have called your grandmother? Wendy was reading to her daughter, monotonously, like she was doing a boring chore. And Kelly suddenly realized that that was the reality and that her mother was used to following rules she'd made up herself. In the shower began to rise again in full growth. The question why? 
Wendy shuddered in surprise when her daughter asked mommy, please don't make it seem like you're busy with an important matter. Kelly, why are you talking to me like that? I have my reasons. Today I met with daddy, and from him I learned a lot of interesting things. A plate flew out of the woman's hands and shattered on the tile floor. Wendy wasn't so confident anymore, and her voice was trembling. Herman is here, and what did he tell you about me? About you? Nothing. Daddy talked about himself, about working in a foreign country and living alone there. Mom, why didn't you go with him? Why didn't you tell me anything about his calls? The woman sat down on the edge of the chair. I'm sorry, my daughter. I thought it was for the best. For whom it's best, only for you. Daddy asked you to come with him, and all you had on your mind was your work. Your department always came first. And now what? Wendy cried. At the time, I thought I was doing the right thing. I talked Herman out of going on the trip, and he wouldn't listen to me. The quiet crying turned to sobs, and Kelly began to soothe her mother. Okay, mom, don't cry. You can't change the past, but you can change tomorrow. Dad promised to help us. By the way, you didn't tell me anything about him sending money on a regular basis. You just turned me against my father, and that's very cruel. That's what I resent most of all through a woman's tears or the money I didn't spend. I've been saving all these years, I thought it would be a wedding present. Well, you collected it, and Emily got it. Mom, I wonder if we'll ever meet again. What kind of eyes will that bitch look at us with? I think people like that have no shame and no conscience. And Wendy wasn't wrong because I never worry about nothing. She not once in her early girlhood emptied the purse of her own mother, who was embarrassed to make a fuss about it on the snap, was bred by a cheeky girl of school friends and later college classmates. The seizure of the cash from Emily's aunt did not count as theft, this procedure she referred to as temporary borrowing. For almost a year, the young relative disappeared unknown where and with whom. And then, as if nothing had happened, showed up at her aunt's house, but Kelly met her. Emily, what are you doing here? But Emily wasn't deterred by the cold reception. I wanted to apologize. Where's Aunt Wendy? My mom's gone. She and my dad went overseas. I wonder what you want to apologize for. Probably for ripping us off and not even bothering with Hugh's rare brooch. Kelly's rant didn't hurt the one-armed woman as much as anything else. She opened her valise-shaped purse and pulled out the antique jewelry. It would be a valuable piece, but it's just trinkets and baubles. I'll return it safe and sound for about a minute they stood in silence. Kelly was about to close the door in front of her, but Emily slipped her foot in the doorway. You're going to keep me on the doorstep. We're related, no matter how you put it. Aunt Wendy wouldn't allow herself to be so careless with her guests. Kelly was always lost in the insolence of other people, and she knew it well enough to ignore her hostess's confusion. She entered the apartment in a hostess-like manner. Kelly, you don't know how exhausting this is for me, do you? During this time, I first tried to get settled in Boston, even contacted your Max, so that he could give me addresses where I could stay. Then I was advised to go to Denver. In short, I'm like that traveler frog. I've been everywhere and seen everything. At least I get tea in this house. Kelly offered helplessly. Come to the kitchen. My supplies are meager. I can only offer pâté. My parents are away, and I have to eat alone. I don't feel like eating. So when I'm alone, I try to buy less groceries. Emily hid her sandwich with gusto. Why so sad? And why alone? Kelly blushed. Max and I are getting married soon. My parents promised to come, and Aunt Clara too. She set aside the sandwich she hadn't eaten. What a great trip. I'll even get a chance to meet my mother. To be honest, she and I got caught up a bit. Apparently, Aunt Wendy complained about me, but I only borrowed your money for a while. It was just sitting in the soup, sitting around. And money's supposed to work. But you know me, I'll pay you back. The appearance of the soul did not promise any joy, but Kelly could not put her on the street. In her thoughts, she cherished the hope that the guest period of a distant relative would end quickly. But it turned out differently. She stayed for a long time. One afternoon, Kelly's eyes began to slip, she tried to fight the drowsiness, but to no avail. Emily noticed the expectant mother's distress. The idea of looking at you hurts, sitting there with your nose turned up. 
Max immediately jumped up and obligingly asked his wife to come along. I'll see you in bed. Woman, please. Still looked at the loved ones. I am still able to think. You treat me like an incapacitated entity. The man kissed his wife on the forehead. It's not like an amorphous being. It's a real object with a beautiful belly. No one doubts your mental abilities either. But Emily, you're right. You really need to rest. Max, but we haven't solved your problem. An hour or an hour and a half won't change anything. You get some rest, and Emily and I will discuss all the financial options. Okay, I give up. The woman stood up with the help of her husband, but immediately clutched her stomach. The man anxiously asked what's wrong. Kelly smiled. False alarm. It's just that our baby has been very restless lately. You said you were having a girl. She looked at the happy Kelly with hateful eyes. But as soon as the woman looked up, she smiled, although it's right, all moms call babies. Pardon me for being uneducated. With each passing day, she was more and more jealous of Kelly and her friend's happiness was becoming a lump in her throat. She had to make an incredible effort to hold herself politely in the presence of a pregnant woman. This was necessary to realize bold plans. Emily's unremarkable brain. For a long time, it searched for the perfect way to realize it. And at last it was found. And not herself was surprised at the simplicity of the solution. All I have to do is get Max on my side. Immediately after her epic comeback, Emily was in limbo. She was afraid her in-laws would kick her out the door, and rightly so, because they'd stolen a decent amount of money from her. But Wendy was a woman of intelligence, and during her brief visit, pretended that nothing had happened. When she tried to assure her that she would repay the debt, the aunt calmly replied, we can wait. Emily even collected money for a while, but then she thought that she could take her time. Her relatives did not rush her, and she finally calmed down. And why worry if her life is quite successful? After a short search, she found her dream job. Max helped her get a job as a makeup artist in a dramatic theater. True, the salary there was so meager that the girl began to think about leaving, but Kelly's husband intervened again. And it's never too late to pay off. Work in the theater is prestigious, and it is not difficult to find additional income if desired. Emily has also not once faced the fact that Max is not accustomed to fulfill his promises. At that critical moment, she didn't believe him either. Max, aren't you the one who's going to get me this job? The young man didn't even raise an eyebrow. Of course I am. Who else would help you? Unfortunately, my wife and her mom don't believe in me, but I'll prove it to them anyway. Emily did not want to listen to lengthy speeches narcissistic egotist, and she unapologetically interrupted him. Max doesn't bore me with long speeches. I'd rather be specific about the case. The man staggered a little, but answered. An acquaintance of mine successfully got a job in a firm that provides funeral services. You're a great makeup artist. You're the kind of specialist that's in demand these days. Thank you. I'll think about it. What's to think about? You know, Max, it's one thing to work with living people and quite another to do makeup on the dead. The man has regained his old confidence. That's Emily. This kind of work pays a lot of money. And you know that money makes all the difference these days. After that common phrase, Max just kind of slumped. She didn't realize it was her time. In order not to frighten the victim, she indifferently asked you also have ideas, but no money. And I understood you correctly, I guessed. I'm not an artist at all lately, I'll tell you a secret. Tried some options, but at once burned out. Not in a connoisseur's tone. My opinion is this. If you're unlucky in one thing, you should stop and think about something else. Emily, I appreciate you being willing to listen to me. It's impossible to talk to Kelly on this topic at all. She can't even hear it. Can you elaborate on what your young wife doesn't want to hear about in the business? I mean, she doesn't trust me, so she won't give me money. I have no money of my own. And my parents are simple farmers. It's not hard to guess what you've already asked for. Kelly gave it to you, but you've been squandering the money. I guessed. The man's heavy sigh confirmed Emily's guess but she decided to support the loser. Just keep your spirits up. We'll figure something out. As they say, I'll make it up to you. You make it up to me. 
that is to say, bash to bash. Max's support, and he decided to thank the girl. It took the man only two days to solve the issue of her placement in a firm of ritual services. Soon Max already felt as an associate and began not only to listen to her advice, but also to fulfill it. A little more than a year later, such cooperation young man, in addition to gratitude, began to feel tenants and quite other feelings. Emily understood this and used her sister's husband to the fullest. But Kelly did not guess that the conspirators are preparing behind her back grandiose plans to enrich themselves at someone else's expense. A short rest helped the expectant mother to regain her strength. The young woman tiptoed to the kitchen and said loudly, I caught you in the act. What are you broadcasting about? She clutched her heart. Kelly, you can't scare people like that. My heart almost stopped. Oh, I'm sorry, girlfriend, I didn't mean to. So what are we talking about? Max gave Emily an expressive look, and she got right to the point. Kelly, your husband told me in detail about his project, and I think his plan deserves attention. The mom-to-be interrupted her friend. And this is Max's third project in two years, and all three have failed miserably. It's a good thing my parents don't know where the money they gave me for the wedding went. By the way, my husband blew my maternity money too. I've already told him to take out loans if he's on fire in one place. Max finally decided to have his say. Kelly, but you know what interest you'll have to pay and why are you pulling away from me? I mean, we're a family, so we have to work things out together. Yes, I agree with such a statement of the question. But I do not agree that we have to risk for two dubious projects. The woman turned to her friend. And don't you know what Max suggested? No, to sell the salon my dad bought me. At this rate, it'll soon come down to the apartment. No, Max, think of something simpler and more realistic. Max looked at the leg in a belittling way, but it shook its head negatively. Later, she advised the man to take his time. I've studied Lenka well. She's a detachable person. Adjusted time, her own project. A child will be born. Kelly will be busy being a mother and kinder. Remember my word. She'll decide to sell this worthless salon herself. And so it happened. After Nancy was born, the young mother forgot all about her little business. She hardly ever visited. The photo parlor. And things went from bad to worse there. One night at dinner, the woman said firmly, I've decided to sell my business before I go completely bankrupt. I don't want to work at a loss. The buyer was found quickly, since the salon was in the center of town. After the deal was finalized, Kelly told her husband, Max, I've already wired the money to your account. Let it be my birthday present to you, but remember that I'm so kind. For the last time, the man kissed his wife. I get it. I swear, you and I will soon be cruising the Mediterranean on our own yacht. Little Nancy looked at her happy father's eccentricity and flooded with laughter. But Max again failed to live up to the trust. The money went to nothing. Kelly was shredding cabbage with a knife with exasperation, preoccupied with her own unhappy thoughts. Nancy asked her several times to read her a new book, but she answered barely restraining herself. Daughter, you see, mommy has no time. She has to make soup. But the little girl couldn't calm down. And you and I will eat soup together. And maybe Aunt Emily will come to visit us? The little girl jumped joyfully on one leg. Healthy kids. They always bring me candy or chocolate bars. That's why you have bad tea. You should eat less sweets. My dad says kids should eat nothing but candy. Your dad just made a bad joke. Kelly threw the cabbage into the pot and sat down on the stool. While the soup is boiling, let me read to you. Nancy held out a book with colorful illustrations, but at that moment the bell rang. She wanted to rush to the door, but Kelly put her finger to her lips and tiptoed into the hallway. The bell rang three times, and the woman opened the door with a sigh of relief. Why didn't you call right away? You know that I'm all on edge. I'm even afraid to go to the store. Emily slipped into the apartment. Did you have company again? Yeah, they tried to come over last night, but I didn't open the door. They texted me this morning. The guests asked if they were threatening. Yeah, I don't know how to get out of it. What does Max say? How does he explain these attacks on his family? He's a man, he's supposed to protect you and Nancy. When she heard her name, the girl ran up to her aunt with a book. This isn't my daddy's book. 
The guests marveled, and what does it say about your daddy, how he defeated all the supervillains? Did the women look at that? Yeah, Kelly did. So I'm thinking about doing something. I don't know yet. I'm gonna call my parents. They won't leave us in the lurch. Emily pulled her eyes out in surprise. What about Max? Are you really going to leave your husband at such a critical moment? You do realize what these comrades will do to them the brew in the pot boiled and spilled on the stove. Kelly and cussed. Damn it, now I'll have to clean the stove a second time. The woman added heat and turned sharply to her friend. Emily, my child's life is more important to me right now. Max has put us in a dangerous position with his dealings. I don't even know where he's hiding. He's borrowed money from people. He took out loans from banks. What the hell was he thinking? Len, it happens to everybody. He's your husband. You know, Emily's been coming around more and more lately. I think my marriage was the biggest mistake I ever made. I mean, how could I have thought that a manly exterior could hide a coward and a bum? Kelly, wait, don't get too excited. Look, what if we tried talking to these assholes, rather than talking to them? But ask them for a reprieve? Kelly laughed. So you're suggesting I take on my husband's debts? But no. The unexpected woman froze in the middle of the kitchen. She stood in one position for a long time, then looked at her friend. Emily, tell me honestly, why are you crying so hard for Max? What is your interest? The guest did not expect a direct question and laughed nervously. What is this absurd suspicion? What are you implying? I'm not implying anything. I'm asking directly why you are always hanging around my husband, Annie. I do not think I'm smarter than others. I've noticed you making advances before, but it was kind of embarrassing to say it out loud. Now it's kind of convenient. You could say, finita la comedia. As a former theatergoer, you should be familiar with that expression. Emily smirked. And on what occasion did you use it now, Emily? But you're a smart woman, and you understand everything perfectly well. And I'm even sure you know where my husband is hiding. Well, tell him I won't pay anything for him. And I'm filing for a dissolution of marriage tomorrow. I'm sick of this. Emily had never seen her friend in such a state before. She pressed her lips together resentfully. Well, you know what, friend? When it feels like it, you gotta go to church. Emily, why don't you go there too? You've got a lot of sins piling up, and you haven't paid off an old debt, by the way. The guest jerked like she'd been electrocuted. But Kelly went on and added the cherry on top, so to speak. I haven't forgotten how you tried to get my husband into your bed. These words Kelly said in a whisper so little Nancy wouldn't hear. Emily turned around and sang with undisguised anger. Who cares about your husband? A loser daddy. And back then, we just wanted to play a little joke on you. Just to shake things up. It was a good one. Kelly opened the door carefully. Nancy came running out of the room with a loud scream. Aunt Emily, you're leaving. Kelly slammed the door shut. Emily, you're going to have to wait with us. I don't want you to run into those types. The relationship between the friends had been soured for a long time, but neither woman had decided to break up because of the many things they had in common. When Kelly noticed that her friend had views on her husband, she silently packed her things and put them in the hallway. She understood without a word. She didn't show up at their house for two years. And when Max got into big trouble, Kelly called her herself. That night, they sat in the kitchen together. But each had her own thoughts. Late that night, Emily hailed a cab and got a cold one. After saying goodbye, she left. She had rented half a house somewhere in the country and even planned to buy the property. But she never invited Kelly to visit her. The next morning, the debt collectors showed up again. They were banging on the door. Kelly and Nancy, breathless, trembled. The woman coaxed her daughter, don't be afraid, my dear. This will all be over soon. We'll go to grandma and grandpa's tomorrow. But Kelly had to postpone the trip because of her husband's death. Kelly called her and said in a tearful voice, Kelly be strong. The native woman screamed, don't tell me what happened, Max. He crashed. My condolences. The room rocked like the deck of a ship in a storm. Kelly forgot about creditors and threatening phone calls. A smiling Max stood before her eyes. Nancy tugged on her arm. Mommy, why are you crying? 
Our daddy's sick. She cradled the baby to her chest and sat like that until Emily arrived. Kelly, you have to go to the lineup? That's what the coroner said. Let's take Nancy to my friend's house. We'll go to the morgue. I'm warning you right away, it's gonna be a hell of a sight. The words were true. Kelly fainted when she saw her husband's body on display. But she was able to tell the coroner yes, that's my husband. He has a tattoo of my name on his arm and a scratch on his wedding ring. Max was buried in a closed casket. A few friends came to say goodbye to him, but his parents didn't come. They explained their absence, Kelly, you were unwell, and I decided to talk to Max's parents myself. You know his father is a heart patient, so I advised them not to come. They'll come over later and hold their son's graveside service. The day after the funeral, Kelly and her daughter left for her parents' house. For almost five years they lived in Italy, where Liam had a business. Wendy pruned their rose garden. After moving to Italy, she became interested in flower farming. This hobby sometimes reached the point of fanaticism. Simon often complained to his daughter Kelly, you would do something about her mother, because she rushes from one extreme to another. She was obsessed with chemistry, and now she's crazy about flowers. Daddy, you can forgive her little foibles. The man sighed. Do I have an election? After all, you women drink the ropes out of us, and we rejoice. After a 10-year separation, love flared up between the parents with renewed vigor. But it was no longer a youthful passion, but mature, like a good wine feeling. Kelly, too, began to forget the troubles little by little. Only sometimes, and at night, she dreamed of a smiling Max. Then she wanted to scream with pain, because love and lurked in the corner of a woman's heart. Her father got her a job in his company, where she met Alex. The young man worked as an interpreter and was involved in important meetings as well as deal-making. Kelly never asked him about his work, as she knew about Alex's strict rules from her father. He laughed a lot himself, with Alex Kelly felt at ease. He was not one of those who likes to throw words, but most of all women were bribed by the fact that his words never diverged from the deed. Alex had once said, Kelly, I think it's time for us to move to another level in our relationship. We run around like teenagers on dates. She replied, laughing. If that's a proposal, I'll take it. But where will we formalize our relationship? The man was surprised. What kind of stupid questions? We'll go to our homeland. We'll sign everything and come back. When Simon learned about the decision of his daughter and co-workers, he was very happy. Mom and I were wondering when you decide to get married. It's a good idea to do it at home. Why don't you come and see if the apartment's in order and Vera's grandmother? Don't forget to check on her. At first, the future newlyweds were going to go together, but just before the departure there was a force major and Alex had to be delayed by work. I'll come on the next flight and let Nancy go instead of me. The girl was very excited about the possibility of going on a trip. Yay! We're going on an airplane. And then I'll get to see your wedding. Kelly corrected the girl. There won't be a wedding. We're just gonna split up. What do you mean, no wedding? I don't agree. I'm not going for nothing. Well, we'll see where we are. There was no point in rescheduling. So Kelly and Nancy started packing. Alex drove them to the airport, waited for them to check in. Don't you miss me? Just one more day and I'll be there. Kelly waved him off and they headed for the lounge. It was only a short walk to the plane. Kelly took a seat. Nancy nearby the girl considered. Mom, it's so interesting to watch people. The woman smiled. And what is that, may I ask? So interesting. Well, look at faces, or rather, by facial expressions, you can tell a lot. Kelly laughed. Are you psychic? Nancy seemed a little offended. Mom, what are psychics these days? I just like to observe. In fact, when I grow up, I'm going to be a psychologist. I think I can help people understand themselves. Kelly took a new look at her daughter. She saw that she was interested in psychology, but she thought it was just a normal teenage hobby. Any teenager changes such hobbies at the speed of light, but she didn't let her daughter finish the thought. Mom, pay attention to that man sitting by the window. Something very important has happened in his life, and it's more good than bad. Kelly looked where her daughter was pointing. There was indeed a man sitting there, an unremarkable man of 1,000 in a suit and tie. 
about 50 or so years old. He wasn't reading, he wasn't on the phone, he wasn't doing anything from which to draw any conclusions. Not very interesting. Why do you say that? But it's just, look, he doesn't have much luggage, so he's traveling on business. He keeps looking out the window dreamily, like he's rushing time, and he's always wiping sweat. It's not hot in the lounge, so it's reasonable to assume that he's just scared. It might not be his first time flying, but then he wouldn't be so nervous. And if he's so scared, but he's flying anyway, then something has happened that he can't miss. One possibility, given his age, he had a grandchild. Kelly couldn't take it anymore and laughed. God, you've got a whole story to tell. If any of it's true, you shouldn't be working as a psychologist, you should be working in a police station, solving crimes. But then you're looking for someone else. Here's mom seeing a woman. She's probably recently divorced. Kelly literally stares at the woman, but again, she doesn't see anything. But the mom here is quite plain. She doesn't wear heels because she's really uncomfortable right now. She's always fixing her hair. So she just recently got a new haircut, a little flashy, and the outfit is like screaming that she's got it all together, plus the airport. She'd obviously decided to take a change of scenery to unwind. Kelly listened and nodded. Yes, it was exactly as her daughter had described. The woman suddenly headed toward them. She really wasn't comfortable in heels. Excuse me, may I sit down? Yes, of course. Kelly nodded at the chairs next to them, then glared menacingly at her daughter because she was about to ask something. The woman sat down and sighed. God, why did I put them on? My legs hurt, so I can't stand. I can't wait for the flight. Touching by how masterfully she spoke Russian, the woman was their compatriot. The road is better to choose comfortable shoes and clothes. The woman waved her hand, it's all a woman's foolishness. With my husband divorced last week and cheated on me bastard like that. So I decided that now I can live for myself and at the same time in divorce. I deserve it. It's all on me. All he does is have fun. Kelly noticed her daughter's triumphant look and even shook her head. Women weren't as stupid as they might have seemed at first. And it wasn't long before Kelly was eager to hear about the flowers as well. It turned out that this woman was engaged in growing some unusual flowers, which were very popular. The business was small, but with a stable income. Now is just the time when flowers are not blooming yet, so I decided to go to my homeland. Are you from Russia too? Kelly smiled yes, we've only lived here for five years. We came to live with our parents. Dad's been here for a long time and mom, mom came a little earlier than us. The woman sighed. Probably family drama too. Yeah, I guess no family is without it these days. Dasha was tired of just sitting there. Mom, I'm gonna go buy some magazines to do on the plane. Just go for a little while so I don't worry. Okay, mom, I'll be right back. Nancy left. The woman smiled. That's a nice girl you've got there, beautiful. You can tell she was born in love. Kelly grinned sadly. Yes, in love. Not for long though. First her dad put us in a lot of debt, and then he crashed. That's when we moved back in with her parents. Oh, why are you coming back? Debts don't get forgiven that fast. No, not at all. We paid it all off. Or rather, my parents helped us. And the more years go by, the more I realize that love fades. I don't know if it's because of what he did, but the fact remains. Yeah, you've had a rough go of it. I mean, running away with a little kid. So you never went to visit his grave again? No, I'm ashamed to admit it. But for some reason, the thought of going there gives me the creeps. The woman was looking behind Kelly and Kelly turned around. She knew immediately that something was wrong. Nancy was walking toward them at a brisk pace. The girl was pale. Kelly jumped up. Nancy, what's wrong? Did someone scare you? The girl nodded, then shook her head negatively. Nancy, What's wrong with you? Mommy, Nancy, it's okay. Kelly was so nervous that even her teeth were beating out a drum roll. Nancy looked at her with adult eyes and said, That's where I saw Daddy there with him Aunt Emily. Kelly collapsed into a chair and the frightened neighbor held out a bottle of water to her. That can't be right. You've made a mistake, haven't you? Our dad's dead. I recognized him myself at the morgue. 
Mom, you know me, you couldn't have made a mistake. And the best part is, it looks like they're on the same plane as us. We're gonna go and check it out. But the woman took her hand. We're boarding. If it's your husband and he's on this flight, you'll see him. But how can that be? It doesn't make any sense. They headed for the gate. At the last minute, Kelly texted her father. There's something weird going on. Nancy said she saw Max. The plane was already in the air. When it passed them, it was Emily. There was no doubt about it. Kelly managed to cover herself with a magazine, and Nancy was looking out the porthole at that moment. Her heart was pounding frantically in her chest. If it was Emily, Nancy couldn't be wrong about her father either. Kelly didn't understand anything at all. They were among the last to descend the gangway. Kelly could clearly see her husband's figure ahead. She didn't know what to do, but now she realized that this man wasn't just a scoundrel, he was a scumbag. At the airport lounge, Kelly headed over to them. Hello, Max. Hello, Emily. Her ex-husband flinched and turned to her. Emily turned as well. But if Max had a rather hunted look, she looked on with hatred. My God, what kind of people? Kelly, but I think I'm the one who should be surprised. I buried you too, Max, and you're alive and well. Emily didn't let him answer. You can take him back. He's not capable of anything. If it wasn't for me, we'd have starved to death a long time ago. No, thank you. But I will definitely take back my money that my family paid for you. She grabbed her arm. Just try, and there'll be another mound in the cemetery. Nancy cradled her knees, and so regretted coming near them in front of her daughter at all. Come on, Nancy. We've got to go. She lifted her head and headed for the exit. Who knew what it took to keep her from bursting into tears? How much she had endured. If it hadn't been for her parents, she never would have gotten out of the state she was in. She loved him so much. And Nancy? Kelly glimpsed a glimpse of her daughter. She remembered little Nancy asking about daddy every day. And him, he'd not only cut them out of her life, but he'd left a pile of debt. And he knew full well they had debt collectors going to them. Kelly didn't know what she was going to do. One thing she realized was that now she should just collapse, just lie there. The smells from the apartment were mind-blowing. Kelly found the strength to smile. Nancy we seemed to be greeted, and none other than Vanessa. Nancy had already calmed down a bit and was tearing up the stairs. Grandma said she was coming, but it had completely slipped the girl's mind. Nancy's grandmother hung on to the older woman, who immediately cried. God, she was so big she didn't recognize it. Then she looked at Lena and raised her eyebrows. Kelly, you're not wearing a face. Is something wrong? Nancy with childlike directness said Grandma. Have we seen Daddy? Who? Well, Daddy. Daddy Max and Aunt Emily. When they were fed, Nancy fell asleep in front of the TV. Vanessa sat Kelly down in front of her. Tell me. There's nothing to tell, Grandma. We met them at the airport. They're not hiding. They live like normal people, I guess. The old lady was silent for a long time, apparently remembering how Kelly was climbing the walls in grief. What do you intend to do? I want to get justice. Oh, Kelly, a lot has changed in the time you've been gone. I wouldn't advise you, who knows who they are now. So you're suggesting I just forget everything and go on mourning my husband and the father's daughters? The old woman was silent again and then said, please be careful. Of course, Alex will arrive tomorrow. That's good. It's time for me, have a rest. Grandma, what are you doing? Where are you going at night? The old lady grinned. As if you don't remember that I'm always at home at night. And then I'm ancient, of course, but not so ancient that I don't know how to use a cab. Kelly had just had time to clear the table when the doorbell rang. She smiled. The years go by, Granny doesn't change still forgetting umbrellas purses, wallets. She swung the door open and the smile slowly slid off her face. Max stood in front of her. Well, hello, goodbye. The woman wanted to close the door, but Max put his foot up. We'll talk. He walked past her into the kitchen, sat down where he always sat before. Why did you come? We don't have anything to talk about. He looked at her thoughtfully. That's what I thought when I saw you at the airport. I was a little worried, I admit. Then I realized it was a real stroke of luck. Kelly grinned. 
what kind of luck is that for you? I guess you were glad you were going to spend the rest of your life in prison. He raised his eyebrows. What's that for? Your death, your debts, a lot of things. You're wrong, Kelly. You've always been short-sighted, down to earth. Couldn't think big easily. Tank's a different story. She's a real bitch though. But the benefit for me in meeting her is not bad. The thing is, my relationship with Anna is dead. Although it was her idea to pull this whole thing off. We wanted our freedom so badly, and there are debt collectors around every corner. So Anka came up with a super plan that worked perfectly. Now I realize I have to figure out a way to arrange my future. I have two options. One, from what I understand, you're still single. So we could reunite and raise our daughter together, which you're looking pretty good right now. Seeing the grimace of disgust, he grinned. I remember you used to recoil from any touch from me. Well, the second one then. I've had some thoughts on how to spin up a business very quickly. But as you realize, I need money for that, which you have no shortage of. Kelly couldn't stand it and laughed. Max, are you out of your mind? What are you talking about? I'm going to go to the police tomorrow and file a report on you. He laughed too. Sure, go ahead. I'll give it away somehow. I'll have a certificate that I've lived without memories all this time. Well, a person loses his memory sometimes. And then I'll write a statement that I forbid to take my daughter abroad. Anyway, I'm not an animal. I'll give you until tomorrow to think about it. I'll drop by tomorrow. He walked silently past her. Kelly didn't even move. Also silently, she closed the door behind her. She rushed to the window. Max got into the car Emily was driving, so today's visit had been thought up by her too. Her cell phone vibrated in her pocket. God, she'd completely forgotten to call her own. It was Alex. And somewhere in the background, her parents' voices. Kelly, what's wrong? Why didn't you call? Kelly sighed. Putting me on speakerphone to tell me everything at once. She spoke slowly, giving her parents time to calm down. Mom, pay attention to that man sitting by the window. Something very important has happened in his life. And it's more good than bad. Kelly looked where her daughter was pointing. There was indeed a man sitting there, an unremarkable man of 1,000 in a suit and tie, about 50 or so years old. He wasn't reading, he wasn't on the phone, he wasn't doing anything from which to draw any conclusions. Not very interesting. Why do you say that? But it's just, look, he doesn't have much luggage, so he's traveling on business. He keeps looking out the window dreamily, like he's rushing time and he's always wiping sweat. It's not hot in the lounge, so it's reasonable to assume that he's just scared. It might not be his first time flying, but then he wouldn't be so nervous. And if he's so scared, but he's flying anyway, then something has happened that he can't miss. One possibility, given his age. He had a grandchild. Kelly couldn't take it anymore and laughed. God, you've got a whole story to tell. If any of it's true, you shouldn't be working as a psychologist, you should be working in a police station, solving crimes. But then you're looking for someone else. Here's mom seeing a woman. She's probably recently divorced. Kelly literally stares at the woman, but again, she doesn't see anything. But the mom here is quite plain. She doesn't wear heels because she's really uncomfortable right now. She's always fixing her hair. So she just recently got a new haircut, a little flashy, and the outfit is like screaming that she's got it all together, plus the airport. She'd obviously decided to take a change of scenery to unwind. Kelly listened and nodded. Yes, it was exactly as her daughter had described. The woman suddenly headed toward them. She really wasn't comfortable in heels. Excuse me, may I sit down? Yes, of course. Kelly nodded at the chairs next to them, then glared menacingly at her daughter because she was about to ask something. The woman sat down and sighed. God, why did I put them on? My legs hurt, so I can't stand. I can't wait for the flight. Touching by how masterfully she spoke Russian, the woman was their compatriot. The road is better to choose comfortable shoes and clothes. The woman waved her hand. It's all a woman's foolishness. With my husband divorced last week and cheated on me bastard like that. So I decided that now I can live for myself and at the same time in divorce. I deserve it. It's all on me. All he does is have fun. 
Kelly noticed her daughter's triumphant look and even shook her head. Women weren't as stupid as they might have seemed at first. And it wasn't long before Kelly was eager to hear about the flowers as well. It turned out that this woman was engaged in growing some unusual flowers, which were very popular. The business was small, but with a stable income. Now is just the time when flowers are not blooming yet, so I decided to go to my homeland. Are you from Russia too? Kelly smiled yes, we've only lived here for five years. We came to live with our parents. Dad's been here for a long time and mom. Mom came a little earlier than us. The woman sighed. Probably family drama too. Yeah, I guess no family is without it these days. Dasha was tired of just sitting there. Mom, I'm gonna go buy some magazines to do on the plane. Just go for a little while so I don't worry. Okay, mom, I'll be right back. Nancy left. The woman smiled. That's a nice girl you've got there, beautiful. You can tell she was born in love. Kelly grinned sadly. Yes, in love. Not for long though. First her dad put us in a lot of debt, and then he crashed. That's when we moved back in with her parents. Oh, why are you coming back? Debts don't get forgiven that fast. No, not at all. We paid it all off. Or rather, my parents helped us. And the more years go by, the more I realize that love fades. When Alex finished, said so, so scheduled a meeting in some cafe for seven hours in advance, agreed with Vanessa that you leave on her Nancy, I fly out in two hours. I'll be at your place soon, Kelly. I heard my mom say that. I think I'm gonna call my sister. She stopped the car. But how'd it go? Just like she said it would. The young woman grimaced. God, it's been years, and your Kelly's still such an idiot. I don't think she'll go to the police. I'm sure she won't. She probably should have run. But that's Kelly. She's as straight as a post. She's never been able to think of more than one option. So we can rule out her running right off the bat. What else can she do? Basically, she's gonna be worried about her daughter. By the way, I didn't know she was single. I just assumed. Who'd want someone like her? Well, unless it's a sucker like you. You didn't laugh. Max cringed. He was determined when Kelly gave them the money. He get the hell out of here. In case she wants to come back to me. She threw him a scornful look, but I don't think so. Come on, let's go to bed. There's a lot to think about tomorrow until she calls me. The next day they worked out the details of the conversation. It was decided that the apartment would be taken away as well. If Kelly gave even a ruble, everything would go back to the way it was. She repeated over and over again how to behave what to say. Then she threw herself on the back of the sofa. We can go to the sea again. Max gave me a little slap, yeah. But I thought we put that money into business. She jumped into business. What business is that? Wasn't it another one of your delusions? Max shook his head stubbornly. It's a good idea, and it won't fail. I've heard of it, and I've seen it when I lived with that chicken. They didn't have time to argue. Max's phone rang. He looked at Emily and saw an unfamiliar number. Well, Beria, what are you afraid of? You're clean before the law, aren't you? Max put the receiver gently to his ear, yes. Max, it's Kelly. Let's go to the cafe by the fountain tonight. I don't want Nancy to hear us talking. Okay, you got a deal. He was about to hang up, but Kelly added that you could bring Emily. It's a family dinner after all. And Kelly hung up. Emily cringed. I guess you didn't sound so sure that Kelly was feeling too good. They drove up to the cafe, entered, they immediately saw Kelly. She was wearing a nice suit, earrings in her ears. She thought, that's okay, I'm going to kill you now. The table was big with lots of chairs, and she couldn't find anything cozier. Kelly shrugged, if you don't like it, you can stand. Emily looked at her in surprise. The cafe was crowded, so she didn't say anything. Sitting down on the chair next to her, Max came down. You thought about it. I take it. Now all we have to talk about is the amount of compensation. Kelly suddenly looked behind them and smiled. Emily sensed that things were not going according to plan. She too turned around and squeezed herself to them six. Clara and she was being supported under the elbow by a young man. Apparently, XXI was unclear to this Kelly why her mother had come. They hadn't seen each other since they had broken up. And the mother did not even know that the daughter has practically a husband. But I guess the in-laws let her in on the whole thing. 
and here I thought I'd raised a daughter who wouldn't bite a snake. Oh, you little bitch. You'll embarrass me in front of my relatives. Pay for the good with rottenness. Emily jumped up. You're not yelling in the marketplace. And you shouldn't give a damn about me, so don't you dare interfere. Clara has always had a great fiery temper. She must have relaxed and forgotten all about it. You're gonna tell your mother what to do. A resounding slap came straight to my school. While she was trying to figure out what was going on, her mother had time to give her a few more cracks before she rushed for the exit. And Clara sat down, turned to Max. Come on, darling, tell me. Max wanted to leave too. He was well aware that their so perfect plan had failed miserably. He stood up, and I think I'll go. But then a heavy hand fell on his shoulder. Sit down. He turned around sharply and was stunned. He would have recognized these people from a thousand. They all had a peculiarity that made them look like collectors, and not those who come from the bank, asking politely to repay the arrears, but those who work for a private individual. The man sat down on the other side of Clara. Alex smiled. Well, I see we're all here. Let's get started, shall we? He put his hand on Kelly's arm and became so calm. Another man came up to the old man sorry a little late. It was the best lawyer in town. How much would you like to receive from my fiancé? But why are you so quick? Maybe she's decided to come back. Then it'll be one amount. If not, it's a completely different amount. Alex turned to the man. That's a serious bid. Max has completely lost it. He just came for the money. The second man with a smile said well. Talk, don't be shy. Everyone is here. Max stammered and said the amount. Alex looked into the paper. Then he turned to the man of gangster appearance. Well, we'll make out the amount is slightly more than the amount of alimony. So we can equalize. In a second, the money was lying in front of him. And the man was a lawyer, slipping some documents at the hard look of his neighbor. Max realized it would be best not to argue. As soon as the papers were signed the money moved his knees. The man said it was alimony. And when to give debts, Max will start this we will decide later. Max watched and realized he was caught in his own trap, but there was no way out. The debt collector stood up too. It was nice to meet my client. What if he decides to run away? Max was picked up three days later. They did a little investigation because there were already plenty of articles for Max. When they took him away, Max cried. Clara tearfully begged them not to put her Emily cut in jail. Let's not let her daughter go to jail, but still her daughter. And a day later she took Emily to two ups. Kelly hardly realized that everything was over. She turned to Alex. You know I knew you were a very good man. But what you did for us, he hugged Kelly not for you, but for all of us for us. She also agreed to accept me into her family. Three years passed. Kelly watched Nancy dance masterfully. Today is her daughter's first real recital. Their studio is performing at a celebration on the town stage. Next up is a sort of leading prima donna. It's a pity, of course, that Alex hasn't been able to make it since they made the decision to stay in their homeland. He was head over heels in his work. Kelly understood everything and tried not to interfere with him. Just yesterday, his parents had returned. Dad walked along the promenade in the evening and said, visiting, good, but home is 100 times better. Nancy saw them. They were sitting in the front rows. The music stopped and the dancers bowed. The crowd applauded loudly. And then Kelly noticed some movement near the stage. She took a closer look. Sure enough, it was Alex. A huge bouquet in his hands makes its way to Dasha. She saw him from the stage and rushed towards him, pushing the guards away. Alex picked her up in his arms. Here you go. Do you deserve it? He held out the bouquet and curtsied jokingly. Wendy wiped away her tears. Simon himself wiped his eyes suspiciously often. Nancy suddenly looked seriously at Alex. Alex, perhaps it should have been done earlier. He wondered what exactly to ask. Would you mind if I called you daddy? He bowed his head. I'd be happy if you called me that. Everyone standing around wiped away Kelly's tears and heard them talking.